So there are many ways. I will show you a couple of them. One of them is that, of course, we have this request uh, from the Flask, and then you have the routes, but now the method become post, right? Because you want to post some kind of a data to the system as well. And the way that you do, you see that this is not even in, in anymore in the URL. It is actually packing the data with another flag called dash D or the data. And then you will send that data that you want in this way, right? So it would be the key value pairs, right? So it would be data. For our case, it would be name and then the, the, the value would be payment, for example, right? And then you should actually get a response like this because of this one, right? Or I mean, this is actually different, but anyway. Uh, so how do you actually do that? Request has like a dot form. You can actually use it. And then it would understand that you are sending the data with the, with the dash D, and then you would define the dot form and then name of that key. And then whatever that would be preserved uh, would be the value of that key, and then you will be able to manipulate with it, right? Let's look at this one. I will copy this guy, but this time I will call it submit number two. And this is a post request, right? And instead of using this, I would just say request.form. And the key that I'm expecting is the name, right? And then the rest is the same. I would just change this one to uh, name two, uh, submit two. Right. I will run this one and then I will go to my insomnia. I will just right click on this one, create a duplication. This would be post request. I create this one. I need to change this one to the post request. I will select the post request. I don't have a query parameter anymore, so I would just delete it. That's okay. But the most important part here is the body. So I need to click on the body. When I click on the body, then there is this arrow down. So when I click on it, then you will have a bunch of utilities that you can use. One of them is form URL encoded. So you can click on it, and then you can actually see what would be the generation of that. This would be the content type like this. And then of course you need to provide the data. So if I just say name, and then I would say payment. And if I just generate the code, this is basically the one that we were actually looking at, right? So from the form, when I selected the form, uh, I provided the name, and this would be this one, and this is the submit number two. So let's send. It. And this is maybe I would just change the name to Wills Arsalan. So this is basically it, right? What is the curl form of this? You will just generate the code, and then you will click on this one, copy it somewhere, because this is a C curl. I will need to make some modification. User agent, these are metadatas. I will discuss it later on on the header side, but these are not needed. This is something that is important, the content type. What is the content that I'm sending? And let me also change this one to post. And then I will show you what, where do I actually find these kind of things. So I go to the terminal, and then I paste it, and I send it. That's true, because this is not needed. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, right. So that's basically the data that's sent. Right. This is one way. Can that be run from the browser also? No, because browsers are for the get. Then you need to go to the console way to, to be able to do that. I am not going to do that. It will confuse you. 
Thanks. Yeah. What else? Ah, yeah, so let me cancel this one, then I will show you the second way. The another way is actually using the data decoded, right? But you see that the content type now is changed. Previously, it was something form, but now the content type is actually changed to the text plane. What does it actually mean? It means that it's sending this metadata, right? It's actually sending that I'm sending you the data in this kind of format so that you understand what is what you need to expect to receive and then process it, right? I had to actually add the previous content type, but there the is a point question on the chat. Can we use, can we post them to Mongo? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, based on whatever kind of response that you have, you can actually make some modification from the server side. What kind of a data that you want to actually process? So when you post the data, then when it gets it from, from the server side, then the data would be entered to your code. Then you can do whatever that you want. You can actually populate it in a database. Whether it would be SQL or no SQL, like MongoDB, that's not, there's no difference between them. Where was I? Uh, yeah, so the data encoded is the another way, and let's let's uh, implement that. So it would be submit number three. This would be submit number three, and then here I would just say data dot encoded, decoded, sorry. And by default, it is a UTF-8. If you don't know it, you need to actually go through the internet. So it's a kind of a mapping between variables. So because the data, request data that you get is a binary data. And this needs to, this binary data needs to be decoded, right? And the algorithm that we are using for the decoding is the UTF-8. Uh, or if you don't even specify it, by default, it will use the UTF-8. And then, we will just give that name and then we just present the date, right? So this would be submit number three. I go to the postman and then I will just duplicate this guy. I will write it submit three, not postman, sorry, the insomnia. Uh, and here I need to remove this one and then I need to create, click on plane. And the plane is, for example, what's the name of the another person, Ryle. And if I click on this one and then show you the generated data is exactly the same thing that I have shown you. So it's a plane data. It's just sending the data. It's not a key value pair. And this would actually work. So if we just do it for the, if I don't make a mistake, was it uh, submit three? And then I send the data and this is actually working as well. And if you want to do the test for the another one, so let me just put this one here. This is hash x, URL is not really needed. And the content type is needed and the data. Going back to the terminal and pasting it. And this is actually the response that I get. What is the last method that I have here? There are other ways as well. You can use it with a file as well, but it's not really important at the moment. Another way is to use get JSON. And I would explain you what is JSON uh, very quickly. But this is again, 
uh, another thing that you can use from the request, you will invoke the get JSON. What is the return of this one? It would be a dictionary. So then it contains both the key and the values that you submit. And the key value that you would provide it is form of a JSON. I will show you very shortly. So there would be the name and then it would be the content, uh, the, the value of it. But the content type would be different. This is application JSON. So remember this, right? You can also use the XML, but that's not really important at this moment. So let's just go and create a submit number four. And this would be four. And then I will just call the request.getJSON. And then as I mentioned to you, get JSON. I hope that it actually explains that it's a parse in JSON, but yeah, but it doesn't really show you what's the actually return type of it is any, but uh, but this is actually coming as uh, as a dictionary, right? So then here I need to use the dictionary variables that you remember if you like this one, so the name because there's a key that is expected and that key would be like uh, the name, right? So then I will run this one before I change this one to four. I go to my insomnia. I will create a duplication. This would be four. This would be a still post request. So here I uh, would need to post it with this one, but this time there's a specific one. It's a JSON, right? And the JSON I will show you very shortly is in this format, right? I will show you, right? So it's a name and what's the name, another person's name. So who is in this call? Susan. Susan. And then I will send the data and that's all, right? So we send the data, and if I want to see how does it actually do it from the command line point of view, this is actually doing that. So the content type is the JSON, application JSON, and the data that is sending is, is in this format of the JSON. And I will show you what is the JSON format. I will not run this one here because I think that you will believe me that this would actually produce the same result. I would need a couple of more minutes, then I would just finish it off. So the JSON stands for the JavaScript Object Notation. So it's a kind of a text format, right? And uh, to be honest, there are a bunch of these text formats that you will use them heavily, right? One of them is JSON. JSON is very much useful and is very much uh readable and the another one is the xml there is another one is the yaml format as well but json is the is the most used one in the industry i use it all the time in my content of the work how is the json looks like the json starts with the open and close bracket and then the content inside it is actually very much similar to the dictionaries that we have in python right so you will have a bunch of you know types like the age as the as a integer and also you can use it like dot something and it would be a float and then there would be a key value pair so the key for example here is the name the value is john do uh, and then the age for example is like that the email for example is again another string but not only that the json also supports uh Sorry, uh, JSON also supports arrays as well. So you would be able to put them in the array format as well. So you will have like hobby and this would be actually an array of two values, or you can think about it as a list in, in terms of function, in terms of Python. Not only that, the JSON format would be also able to contain another you know, JSON as well. So this is kind of like, a, it's not the kind of a JSON, it's like another dictionary inside another dictionary, right? So this is another one, this is for example, address, and you see that there's an open and closed bracket. And then there again, 
This is repeated. For the street, city, state, you have a key value pairs.